what exactly is PCOS? So PCOS is a hormonal disorder in which ovaries produce excess of androgens, that is male hormone. Why has PCOS become so increasingly common? The increase in incidence is mainly because of the lifestyle, unhealthy diet, then stress at workplace leading to in, uh, inadequate sleep, then a sedentary lifestyle leading to obesity. Um, is PCOS curable? Anyone who tells you that PCOS can be cured, please do not buy that information. It can be controlled with proper treatment and lifestyle modification by proper diet and exercise regime and certain medications. Hello and welcome to Fertility Tales powered by Nova IVF. I'm your host Simrat and today we're diving into a very important topic. PCOS and Fertility. Joining us is an expert in the field, Dr. Parul Gupta from Nova IVF Fertility and South End Fertility and IVF in Gurugram. With over eight years of experience in obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive medicine, Dr. Parul specializes in PCOS with infertility, endometriosis associated infertility, hysteroscopy, and recurrent pregnancy loss. Her philosophy is simple. Every patient's journey is unique, requiring a personalized touch. Today, she is here to share her insights, helping us navigate the complexities of PCOS and fertility. Welcome, Dr. Gupta. Thank you. I'm glad to be part of this podcast, Fertility Tales. Let's start at the very beginning. Uh, what made you take medicine as a profession? Was it your childhood dream? So, I would say I have never thought of anything else since I was a child to be anything else apart from being a doctor. So, yes, it was my childhood dream and uh, I... There was lot. There is lot of respect which comes with the profession. It is considered very honorable as well. Hence, I always wanted to become a doctor. How did you choose reproductive medicine or infertility as a field? So I was practicing as a gynecologist for quite some time after my post graduation, where I was conducting deliveries. And in my practice, I found out that four out of every ten patients were dealing with infertility. So I wanted to go into the depth of the subject and I really wanted to help such couples. So that is when I decided to do a fellowship in infertility. And after that, I am now mainly practicing as a fertility specialist. Doctor, while you were practicing uh, as a gynecologist, uh, did you come across patients uh, who were suffering from PCOS? Yes. So if we say that infertility is on the rise, like with every decade, the incidence is increasing. And one of the most common cause of infertility is PCOS. Let's break it down for our listeners. What exactly is PCOS? Uh, also, which has multiple names. PCOS, PCOD or polycystic ovarian syndrome. They are one and all the same. So PCOS is a hormonal disorder in which ovaries produce excess of androgens, that is male hormone. So normally in a menstrual cycle every month when a female gets her period one of the egg in the ovaries grow it becomes dominant and somewhere around the mid cycle the egg is released that is ovulation happens but in females with pcos because of excess male hormones the follicles do not grow and they appear like fluid filled with cysts hence the name polycystic ovarian syndrome unlike earlier times why has PCOS become so increasingly common in today's scenario? So PCOS is a lifestyle disorder. If you see now one in every five women has PCOS. It is one of the most common hormonal disorder in the seen in females in their reproductive years. The increase in incidence is mainly because of the lifestyle, unhealthy diet, then stress at workplace leading to in. Uh, inadequate sleep, then a sedentary lifestyle leading to obesity, all of this cumulatively leads to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So how does a person understand that uh, they might be suffering from PCOS and what are the common symptoms of uh, PCOS? So female who has been diagnosed with PCOS, there are two main culprits. One is insulin resistance and the second is extra male hormones. Now, because of this androgens, there are the symptoms of irregular menses. 
so females may not get their periods for at a stretch of 3 to 6 months and when they get their periods they are very heavy at times again there will be acne hirsutism that is unwanted hair on the face on the upper lip chins and other parts of body there can be thinning of the hair alopecia and because of n ovulation it leads to infertility and because of insulin resistance there is obesity the metabolic rate becomes very slow there can be darkening of skins at the neck underarms and other parts of body and all this cumulatively leads to body image issues uh, depression anxiety and all these are the symptoms if a female is going through them she should seek help from us and uh, why do certain females have high levels of androgen what causes it so first of all we need to understand what are androgens androgens in simple term means male hormone that is testosterone now in females with pcos there is excess of testosterone whereas testosterone is present in all the females but in small amounts pcos women have insulin resistance and obesity these leads to excess of the androgens in women with pcos doctor let's talk about fixing how do you go about living with pcos are there any uh, specific dietary recommendations or nutritional interventions that are beneficial for people with pcos especially for the ones who are trying to conceive majority of the women with pcos have insulin resistance and the first thing they are told is to fix their diet now before we understand how to change the diet we need to know what insulin does so we gain our energy from carbohydrates these carbohydrates are digested into glucose and it is this insulin which converts glucose into energy now how faster a carbohydrate is digested the faster will be the insulin spike and regular insulin spikes are very bad for a person who is wanting to lose weight so you should opt for foods with low glycemic index okay what is glycemic index carbohydrates are rated on a scale from 0 to 100 according to the glycemic index where 100 means sugar like table sugar so the easier it is for us to digest the carbohydrate the faster is the release of sugar from our body and something like table sugar has a glycemic index of 100 so we do not want such a fast release of glucose when we have food that is why foods rich in uh, or foods with high glycemic index are not favored these include like maida potatoes and foods with low glycemic index include oats brown rice or legumes should women suffering from pcos take more of vegetables in their diet so not necessarily veggies they need to have a balanced diet carbohydrate should be 20 to 30% of the diet the diet should be rich in protein it is important to have lots of fluid when you are taking a protein rich diet and a weight loss of 5 to 10% can help reduce the symptoms of pcos so for example if a female is weighing 100 kg it is not necessary that she has to reduce 20 kg or 30 kg even a weight loss of 5 to 10 kg will reduce her symptoms will restore ovulation at times and also follow a proper exercise exercise regime which includes 30 to 40 minutes of exercise whether it be yoga cardio training or strength training What is your take on different diets uh, like intermittent fasting, keto or gluten-free diet? What do you have to say about that? I would say a diet deficit in calories will help reduce weight. Also remember whenever you are following any diet whether it be intermittent fasting, keto or gluten-free it should be sustainable in long run because PCOS is a lifelong disorder. So anything which you can only do for short term will not help you much okay i think a lot of people think this uh, and they want to know um is pcos curable and if not like how can people keep it under control anyone who tells you that pcos can be cured please do not buy that information akin to diseases like diabetes pcos is a lifelong disorder it can be controlled with proper treatment 
and lifestyle modification by proper diet and exercise regime and certain medications. Can you explain the potential genetic components of PCOS and how this may influence a woman's risk of developing this condition? Is it genetic? So PCOS has a genetic component. In fact, there are many studies which have shown that women with PCOS have first degree relative suffering from PCOD. They may have hyperandrogenism or type 2 diabetes mellitus. And this genetic component is activated by lifestyle uh, factors. So yes, PCOS is seen to run in families. If a female has her mother or sister who is suffering from PCO, she may also develop PCOS. Are there any specific tests or criteria to identify PCOS in women who are experiencing infertility? How does one test for it? There is no single diagnostic tool to identify PCOS. There is a criteria known as Rotterdam criteria, which has three components. First, irregular menses. So if a female who has a history of having irregular periods or amenorrhea, second being hyperandrogenism, that is excess male hormones. The clinical aspect of that is acne, hirsutism, and it is tested then by blood levels, wherein we check their free testosterone levels. The third being ultrasound. So on ultrasound, we look for the ovarian volume. If it is more than 10 cc or if the follicles are arranged like string of pearls around the outer edges of the ovary. Now out of these three components, if any of two are present, a woman is diagnosed to have PCOS. And uh, how important is early detection and management of PCOS in improving fertility outcomes for women? Because it is considered one of the factors that could uh, lead you to not having babies. Early diagnosis and treatment is very important. Firstly, these females are not having regular periods. Now, for a female, for her mental well-being also, it is important that she has regular menstrual cycles. Also, to regularize these periods, the common treatment which is given is birth control pills, which also comes in with a taboo. So, it becomes at times very difficult for us to explain, like why, even to the parents, that why their child is being prescribed these pills. Secondly, if the periods will be irregular, then also the cycles are inovulatory, where, which in leads to infertility. So sometimes even with regularizing the periods, the patient is able to conceive on her own. And this also protects these women from having long-term complications like metabolic syndrome. So early diagnosis is very important. How would you go ahead with infertility treatment for a woman suffering from PCOS? What would be the recommendations? PCOS is one of the most common cause of subfertility in women. Now, why does infertility happen at the first place? Firstly, the cycles are anovulatory, that is, ovulation is not happening and the periods are irregular. So, these women, when they come to us, with help of simple changes like lifestyle modification wherein they lose their weight. This restores ovulation in many of such women. Secondly, if by that they are not able to ovulate, we give them simple treatment like ovulation induction wherein they are given certain tablets and we do regular monitoring with ultrasound wherein we see that whether the follicle is growing with, when it will ovulate and accordingly they are told to have intercourse with their partner. If this doesn't help, then they can seek more help by treatments like intrauterine insemination and IVF is the last resort. So many times it has been seen that women are scared to reach out to a fertility specialist because they think if they go to an IVF center, they will be told to undergo IVF, but it is not so. And with simple treatments like ovulation induction, these women can conceive. For people who have PCOS, can you elaborate what are the long-term health implications of uh, PCOD beyond infertility, such as what all diseases or disorders could be associated with it? Um, is metabolic disorders or cardiovascular risks, what kind of uh, other uh, factors could be associated with PCOS? In long-term, PCOS women can have metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? It has few components. These women are more prone to have high blood pressure, that is hypertension. Secondly, they can have type 2 diabetes mellitus in future. 
Thirdly, there is a high risk of cardiovascular events. Then there are very high chances of them developing endometrial carcinoma. So these are some of the long term complications of women who are having PCOS. Uh, what are some misconceptions, common misconceptions and myths about PCOS that you encounter in your day to day handling and how would you address them in patient care? So as a doctor, I think it is my duty to create awareness in such women who come with many, many misconceptions. First, PCOS can be cured. Now, PCOS is a lifelong disorder and it cannot be cured. But do not worry, it can be controlled by lifestyle changes. Fix your diet, follow a proper exercise regime and have a control on your weight and we can curb PCOS. Then second most common myth which is seen is women with PCOS cannot become pregnant. Yes, PCOS has a PCOS is an ovulatory disorder wherein it is very difficult for these women to ovulate. But with lifestyle changes and certain medications which correct this ovulatory dysfunction, women do ovulate and can get pregnant naturally. And if by unfortunately they are not able to get pregnant naturally, we help them by giving them tablets or at the max intrauterine insemination or with IVF, they can become pregnant. Does stress have any impact on PCOS? So that's a very good question in fact, because stress may not have a direct role, but we all know that stress increases the level of stress hormone that is cortisol. Now in women with PCOS, there is insulin resistance. Also, they have a slow metabolic rate. So as per se, they have difficulty in losing weight. And because of this stress hormone, it becomes even more difficult to lose weight. And then the cycle of PCOS, the vicious cycle of PCOS continues. So PCOS leads to stress and stress can worsen PCOS. And what about lifestyle choices like smoking and drinking? Does the, that have an implication? So smoking and alcohol are part of your lifestyle. So we know PCOS is a lifestyle disorder. Now in PCOS, there is a if impact on the egg quality of a woman, smoking also impairs the egg quality of the women. So because of that, patients with PCOS should refrain from smoking. Are there any risks or complications associated with pregnancy for women with PCOS? So in PCOS, we have learned that it is difficult to become pregnant. But once they are pregnant, it is a high risk pregnancy because there are higher chances of miscarriages. Also, these women are more prone to develop high blood pressure, that is preeclampsia, or to type, type 2 diabetes mellitus in pregnancy. Then this all leads to preterm delivery and they are more prone to undergo cesarean sections. So PCOS comes with difficulty in being pregnant and once they are pregnant, it is a precious pregnancy then. Um, how can women suffering from PCOS uh, try to... Uh, control their weight during their pregnancy. Um, is there a way that uh, women with PCOS can do differently to manage their weight? So women once they are pregnant, PCOS women once they are pregnant are not advised to lose weight per se, but it is not necessary that they should gain the normal weight in pregnancy that is around 11 to 12 kgs. The weight gain will also depend upon your pre-pregnancy weight. So somebody who is on the higher side are told not to gain more than 5 to 6 kilograms through the entire pregnancy. Also, with, there is a common myth that the women has to eat for two. That is not true. The baby will take its nutrition from the mother no matter what. So you, are, you should take healthy diet and the necessary nutrients and should keep a check on your weight. Is there any diet uh, implication for somebody who is expecting uh, and who already has PCOS? So the diet, whether she be pregnant or not, it has to be balanced. Now, it is important that we take our energy from fats and not carbohydrates. Okay, so 20 to 30 percent of the diet should be from carbohydrates. The rest, majority should be the proteins and the fats, the energy should come from the fats. And uh, the necessary nutrients, the calcium, iron, these supplements 
have to be taken by a pregnant woman in her pregnancy. Also, the calorie intake is additional for the uh, during the pregnancy in various trimesters, like 400 additional calories or 500 additional calories have to be taken by the pregnant woman, again depending upon their pre-pregnancy weight. In my experience, PCOS patients carry home a baby. So far, I would say whatever patients I have treated so far, at least 80% patients would have gone home with the baby. Now, there was this one couple who was suffering from infertility for the last 12 years where the female had PCOS. The patient had visited various gynecologists. She was already prescribed pills for ovulation induction. They did not work. Then she was put on hormonal injections also in small doses. They also did not help her ovulate and she was referred to us by a fellow gynecologist. So when I see, saw the patient, by the appearance only I could make that she has PCOS because she had this typical appearance of facial hair and very obese patient. We did ultrasound and on the ultrasound the ovaries had many many follicles. So we planned IVF cycle for her. Now in the first attempt when we started ovulating none of the follicles grew. So we had to cancel the cycle. We controlled her hormones with certain tablets and then we again started off stimulating her ovaries and with proper monitoring and everything we saw some 40-50 follicles that were growing though we took care of all the dosage of the hormones and everything and I retrieved somewhere around 50 to 60 eggs. So these US patients have a very high risk of undergoing hyperstimulation. So we have to take care of that part as well. And also this has an impact on their egg quality. So when we formed embryos out of her eggs, we could get some six to seven good quality embryos only, though we recovered some 50 eggs. And then there was challenge with the endometrium. In the first attempt, when we transferred embryos, it was a failure. Then we told her to get her embryos genetically tested to rule out any chromosomal problems. So out of six embryos, three of them had chromosomal abnormality and we could get three chromosomally normal embryos. We transferred one of them. Then she was pregnant in the first go and they then carried home the baby. Now it has been more than a year that she has been delivered. Thank you, Dr. Parul. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about such an important topic such as PCOS and really how it is related to infertility. And that wraps up another enlightening episode of Fertility Tales powered by Nova IVF. To our listeners, remember, you're not alone in this journey. For more insights and stories, make sure to subscribe to our podcast. I'm your host, Simrat, saying goodbye for now. But always remember, together, we can navigate the path to parenthood. Stay tuned for more tales of hope, struggle and success. See you next time.